If you're wondering what Montessori sensitive periods are and how knowing about them can make your life easier as a new parent, you are in the right place. This video is part of two series, a little mini series on sensitive periods. Today we'll be covering what the absorbent mind is, what are the sensitive periods, how to recognize them in your child, benefits of knowing them, kind of like a high level overview. And then in each subsequent video, I will be talking more in depth about each sensitive period from what age to expect it, more specifics on recognizing it in your child, activities to do with them, and just how to navigate it as a whole. So that's the mini series and it's also part of a larger how we realistically Montessori at home series. So I will leave links to both those playlists in the description box below, but make sure to hit that subscribe and notification button so you don't miss future videos in these series. Montessori sensitive periods can be defined as a stage of development where a child has an innate interest in gaining knowledge or a specific skill. Dr. Montessori identified the absorbent mind as the period between birth and six years old-ish where children literally absorb everything. She divided it into two stages, the unconscious mind, which is from birth to three, and the conscious stage, which is from three to six years old. Today, Montessori theories are further supported by neuroscience, which has found that humans primarily spend the first two to three years of their life in their delta brain waves, which is also called the unconscious mind, as Montessori also called it. From three to six, they move out of their delta brain waves and into our theta brain waves, which we know today as the subconscious mind, not the conscious stage as Montessori called it. What are these sensitive periods of development exactly? Dr. Montessori herself actually only identified six sensitive periods initially. These included language, order, movement, refinement of the senses, small objects, and social behaviors or courtesy and manners or grace and courtesy as some people call it. There is some debate as to how many sensitive periods there are. The Montessori Foundation has continued to build off of these and others have noted up to six additional sensitive periods in a child's life during that zero to six range. These include toilet learning, music, mathematics, spatial relations, relationships, reading, and writing. Although I lump reading and writing under language personally. Again, we'll go deeper into all of those in the subsequent videos of this series. How to recognize sensitive periods in your child. When you see your baby or toddler with just an intense laser focused interest in something, staring at it, engaging with it, continuously repeating a specific behavior over and over and over and over again. Those are all pretty big signs that your child is in a sensitive period. It's like they have this one track mind. So even though maybe they are pulling themselves up over and over and they keep falling over and over, they have a sense of joy or peace about them. They don't really get tired. <laughs> Their tolerance for frustration is a, a lot higher than it would be for you or I. Sensitive periods happen naturally during a child's development and you don't necessarily need to do anything as a parent. So that's really nice. However, there are a few things that you can do to make your life easier, their life easier, and to make sure that they reach the full potential of said sensitive periods. So number one is obviously gonna be not interrupting the child. If you see your child has like a laser focused interest in something, don't interrupt them unless you absolutely need to and don't try to help them. So if your child is constantly pulling themselves up over and over and over again and they keep falling, there's no reason for you to comment on it, put your hand out, try to help them. They've got this. Obviously, it's a good idea to stay nearby for assistance, especially if there's a safety concern, but you really want to take a step back and observe. The next thing that you can do is really prepare the environment, which was another one of Dr. Montessori's really big teachings. As your child begins to approach one of the sensitive periods, you can begin to prepare the environment. And we'll talk ways to do this specifically in each of those specific sensitive period videos. But this could be anything from placing certain objects in a room, removing certain objects in a room. There's really no need to rush forward in any of this. When we get into each of those specific sensitive period videos, you'll see that each of them comes with an age range. Don't stress if your kid is falling behind or doesn't happen right when they turn that specific age. It is any time during that range that they may develop this 
really targeted interest. And it's most important to follow your child. So having the materials available to them in the environment, but there's no need to push the materials onto your child. Taking note when they're naturally gravitating towards it, and then adding more things in to support them throughout the environment is really the key here. The benefits of knowing about sensitive periods are really endless in my opinion. It makes it a lot easier to take a deep breath as a parent and also set your child up for success. For instance, there's a sensitive period for toilet learning. Really nice to be able to know when to start having those books on your child's bookshelf so that way when they do start to show signs of readiness, you can really meet them where they're at. If you miss that sensitive period, what you can end up finding out is that it takes a lot longer for them to integrate the skill down the road. This is going to really train parents to have that sharp, keen eye for meeting the child where they're at, which can just make things a lot easier. So the reason that I love it so much is that it gives you a lot of new ideas and it also gives you kind of like a better filter to understand some of our child's reactions, especially when they don't necessarily have all of the words to communicate what is happening internally for them. So they're kind of like a cheat sheet, if you will, which what parent doesn't want that? Make sure to hit that notification subscribe button so you don't miss the breakdown of each of these sensitive periods, including activities, more specifics on how to spot them and navigate them. In my next video, I will be talking all about the Montessori sensitive period for movement, which starts at birth and you won't want to miss it. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to drop them in the comments below or hit me up on Instagram at the confused millennial. Have a good one.